Hi, uh, now we are going to see the surface finish left hour machining. Uh, we have seen already all tool paths. This is the final tool path, is called left hour machining. Uh, we can say uh, this is the uh, 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 when when you do the uh, roughing, after that you are doing the rest machining. Uh, what uh, rest machining does is, uh, whatever the uh, rough tool is uh, left out material will be removed by the rest machining tool. Okay. So, it is the secondary operation for the roughing and that is called the rest machining. Similarly, here the left over machining is surface finish. Uh, uh, this is secondary operation, surface finish secondary operation. It will remove the material left out by the surface finish cutter. See, this is called the left over machining. But this is the finishing uh, uh, rest machining. This is a finishing rest machining or finishing secondary operation. So, this, uh, generally in finishing, uh, in finishing where the material is left out only on the corner. Uh, this tool path only machines on the corner. So, wherever the surface intersections are there and uh, there will be uh, uh, material left out, that will be removed by the this left or machining. Um, so, we have two tool paths for this. One is a pencil, another one is the left over. Now, now we will we'll, we'll, uh, uh, see the uh, uh, sample here. Uh, how it is function means uh, it will uh, it will check the previous tool diameter and uh, current tool diameter and the what out left out material it will generate the tool path. So now we will go for uh, tool path surface finish left over. So I, I am selecting the entire model. Okay, so I am not giving boundary for this. So I will select the uh, small ball and mill. Uh, it is very important that uh, what is the uh, smallest uh, uh, radius is accepted. That you should know what is the minimum radius accepted in the model that you should know. Based on that you need to select the tool. So, how much a small tool if you are using, that much of chances of tool breakage is there. So, you should be take care of uh, uh, tool length. Okay. So, now I will select a tool um, and parameter is given. Okay and the feed per tooth is given. Ok, so in the next page we will we'll give a plunge rate still lesser here and stock I am not going to give anything here uh, here uh, so how much step over you want to give so I will say 0 0.2 and slope angle uh, 0 to 90 degree, 0 to 90 degree. It means uh, uh, it will search the uh, entire model wherever the 0 to 90 degree intersections are there. There it will understand and generate the tool path. That's the reason angle is given. This is the cutting method, one way, zigzag, all the things and the 3D collapse. So based on that uh, the calculation will be there. So, you can use hybrid constant overlap also. So, additionally you have a cut angle and extensions are there. That we will see later on. Uh, keep the cuts perpendicular to the left over region. So, we will we'll switch on one by one and we will see now. Now, I will I will kept the cutting method uh, zigzag and I will come to the next page. What is the rough tool diameter you need to give? and what is the uh, current tool and uh, and what is the overlapping uh, these things uh, based on the based on the uh, old tool means used will generate the tool path 
and also it will generate a tool path on on our uh, uh, our tool also so what is uh, left out in between is only place that uh, it will generate the tool path so i given 12 dia and uh, radius is uh, 6 so overlapping 1 mm is given so it will generate the tool path wherever there is a intersection now we have taken only one uh, I think only that zigzag uh, thing. So only on the corner it has generated. So one mm we have given little more I think so we'll reduce it. So 12 and 3 uh, cutter used. So we'll make it 6 cutter there. Radius 3 over. Okay. So based on the gutter, gutter diameter, that uh, blending width is uh, decided, okay. So now we can see that. Uh, here, but uh, restrictions are uh, too much. So we will see that whether we have done the optimized cut order. We can go optimize cut order and uh, you say smooth we will give. Um, or otherwise you can do follow surfaces also. Toda, um, some little amount of uh, retraction is reduced now but it's not uh, visible okay so this is the zigzag you can you can use one way also but uh, it will take a lot of uh, restriction in that case so one way is not um, then next you can use the 3d collapse method also so in the 3D collapse, the calculation method is uh, changed, not like a uh, normal uh, this one. So it will it will generate very nice uh, tool path. Uh, this is the 3D collapse. So this is uh, a tool path made only a uh, corner. So you can switch on the hybrid now. Extension length 1 mm is given. Cut angle let it be 30, 45 degree. Okay, I will say yes. So now I switch on the hybrid and let us see that how that toll path uh, look like. helical transitions this is the horizontal and a vertical corner so if you keep the perpendicular the machining angle means um, then uh, the cutter and cutting direction will change now Uh, this uh, we can see that the cutting method is the corner it is cut like this so machining region if you said uh, perpendicular to the machining region left over region automatically it will generate uh, cutting by this method like this it will machine this is the left over machining method Okay. This is the left domain, but lot of restrictions are there. Uh, maybe the reason is uh, uh, tool is not fitting over there. That's reason it is uh, retracting more. So either either you can reduce the tool diameter. Uh, we have given already, uh, we'll see, and uh, uh, we just removed the gauge motion, and but uh, it's not advisable to remove the gauge motions. Um, so it's better always keep gauge motions. 
So I'll, I'll switch on again. Uh, this is the leftover machining. The leftover machining is only for the uh, remove the material left by the uh, previous cutter of the surface finishing toolpath. Okay, thank you.